स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Welcome students in today's class or in this video essentially we are going to talk about uh, the consequences of mean value property for the heat operator so essentially what we are going to do is uh, look at some you know properties of the heat equation uh, based on the mean value theorem so properties of solution of solution to the heat equation to the heat equation right heat equation so again as you remember i am going to only talk about this equation ut minus laplacian of u equals to 0 in omega t okay and that is omega cross 0 t plus so, as you have seen that once i know how to you know work with homogeneous problems then i can deduce many things about the uh, inhomogeneous problem so just from the idea of how uh, homogeneous problems uh, you know behave so the first theorem which we are going to do so this is the first result this is called a strong maximal principle just as we did for the laplacian okay strong maximal principle principle for the heat equation heat equation okay what does that say so it says that let uh, Let's just call that one. Huh? Maybe I can call that one. Huh? It's not good. I mean, I, I'm going to use that here. So let u in C two one omega t intersection C the boundary parabola. I mean, continuous up to the parabolic boundary. So basically, omega t bar. Okay, on the parabola C. Essentially, omega t plus the up to the boundary. Okay, so what am I taking? I am taking. I am saying that u has twice the two derivatives inside uh, omega t with respect to x, one derivative with respect to t inside omega t, and uh, it is continuous up to the boundary of omega t. Clear? Yeah. So let this solve one. Also, okay. If that happens, then I want to find out where is the maximum attained. So then, the maximum of u, okay, in omega t bar that is attained in the maximum of u in gamma t, okay, where, as you guys know, gamma t is the parabolic boundary right parabolic boundary okay so this is the first part the second part is this so what does the first part say let us understand again the first part said says that if of course you see here please remember this thing most of the maximal principles when we you know deal with maximal principles most of the times yes if it is not specifically mentioned it is always assume that omega is of course it is open right i mean there is nothing to do here open bounded S smooth smooth and bounded okay that is always assumed see since if omega is bounded okay it is open and bounded right so 
omega com if you take the closure of omega that will be a compact state if you are looking for a continuous function so u is continuous right on a compact state then the maximum of u is attained somewhere right in the closure the, 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 on the compact state in this theorem says that if you are looking for a maximum okay then look no further than the boundary so if there is a maximum this theorem says that if there is a maximum it will be uh, the, the, i mean the maximum is attained on the boundary see please understand this the first part is saying the maximum this is attained on the boundary what sort of boundary the parabolic boundary we have talked about the parabolic boundary now many times huh? so the parabolic boundary the base and the vertical side if you remember okay so um, that now the thing is the second part is this so moreover moreover if omega is connected and uh, by the way most of the theorems which we do we always think i mean assume that omega is connected and there exists x not t not x not t not in omega t okay such that such that uh, u x not t not u x not t not is equals to maximum of u okay on omega t bar so let's say you are saying that let's say omega is connected and there is a interior point interior point huh? so in inside the domain interior point where the maximum is attained then then u is you guys already know this is the same thing as laplacian huh? this is constant constant in omega not here yeah. so it is saying that if the maximum is attained yes uh, i mean somewhere in the interior whatever uh, let's say uh, so let me draw this i will be better i think uh, okay and uh, so it goes on doing this let's say that's your domain okay that is the domain and uh, Huh? Okay. Uh, problem. You no. Know, so this is your t variable. Huh? This is your r n. This is your r n. Okay. So r two. It can be r two, r three, whatever it is. If that's a t variable, that will give you height. So let us assume that. You see here. So this part, uh, let's say there is a point where it is x not t not, and in this point it is saying that the maximum is attained. If that is happening, then you can say that u is constant, not in whole thing. Yeah, it is not saying that u is constant in the whole cylinder. It is saying at the level, this level. So omega, t, um, I mean not at all, omega t not. So up till. Uh, I mean you know so for all time t less than equal t naught okay because you see if you remember what is omega t naught omega t naught bar is omega cross zero t naught close the closure of that clear that's it so you take the omega that's your omega inside huh? the open set that this is your omega and uh, then you know this time zero open zero close t naught so up t t t not the whole this whatever is there inside this liter in this whole part it is um, constant huh? see this makes particularly good sense here because this is the evolution equation right let's say you are saying the maximum is attained somewhere uh, i mean uh, at the point x not y x not t not you cannot say that it is uh, constant in a time at room i mean you know in future so let's say t naught plus epsilon or something yeah because you see you cannot determine the 
I mean, uh, of course, the system depends on the initial points. Okay, but the uh, I mean, the future. Um, I mean, what I meant is this: you see, um, you can actually determine. Uh, let's say the since the maximum is attained at this point. I mean, the the at at the level t equals to t naught. Huh? So this level, let's say t naught. Huh? So, uh, if the maximum is attained at the level T naught, so up to T naught, whatever is happening, that data is there. So, you can actually uh, say that the, no, what the behavior of you uh, for all time T, which is less than equal T naught, okay, not in the future, that's what, okay. So, C, so, Let's make a small remark here. That's what I'm remark. Yeah. It says the C forty forty greater than equal T naught. The problem is this. Yeah. Up to T naught. It is the same thing what we did in Laplacian. The same sort of idea will work. But for T greater than T naught. the solutions okay they may change they may change so phys physically it may not be i mean uh, i mean it's not a viable option to uh, look in the into the future okay since the boundary conditions change see here up till here uh, up till t equals to t naught up till that level we know what is the, i mean you know uh, we have an idea of how, how u is working so you know that the maximum is attained up till that point huh? uh, i mean omega t not okay bar but uh, so that is why uh, we have we have an idea of what the behavior of you uh, before that time but after that time the boundary condition may change right and hence the solution may change okay so that's what it is saying okay now let, let's look at the uh, you know proof of this theorem you know. Oh, uh, the, this is a small remark here. Yeah, another remark. Uh, maybe I can write it down. Remark. Of course, the same thing for Laplacian. So similar results hold. Holds if maximum is replaced with the minimum so you can say it is a strong minimum principle so the same thing the minimum will not be attained i mean it will be attained only on the you know uh, boundary essentially that's what i was saying so if it attends in the interior it has to be uh, constant up till that uh, t goes to t greater less than equal to okay so let's look at the proof of this theorem proof. now what is the difference between this and laplacian not much difference is there so let's look at this theorem much important see uh, let me tell you i i do not remember if i uh, said this thing while talking about laplacians but maximal principles any time yeah so let's say uh, we did the maximal principle for laplace now we are doing it for heat remember one thing maximal principle for any operator if you can define maximal principles then half of your work is done i mean you do not need to find an explicit solution and that sort of thing yeah because maximum principle i mean this is extremely strong because last time you have seen right you know you can talk about uniqueness you can talk about well posedness and we did not do this part but you can actually talk about uh, you know existence also with the help of maximum principle so it's very very strong property okay so uh, let's look at the proof of the theorem proof uh, let there exist a point x not y not it is given right Uh, it is given no x not t not there is a point 
which is given you see i assume t is not you know so i do not have to worry about any other point huh? let's take this point okay so let u of x not t not is equals to m yeah and what is m of course that is the maximum of maximum of u over omega t bar clear okay so i am just uh, i'm just renaming it as m that's all huh? the maximum is let's say m that's the number now if you take so for sufficiently small okay r positive so this will depend yeah r positive the heat ball e x naught t naught r this is containing omega t yes of course it is you see omega t yes is a open set okay of course uh, there is the, 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 the top uh, hat is there yeah without the boundary the top hat is there but it is still mm, i mean not exactly an open set without the top i mean if you want the top hat it's an open set but essentially if you take r smaller if you if you, you think of the heat ball of course you can have a small enough heat ball accommodated inside omega t right yeah that i think this you can check yourself if you are not convinced so please check yourself this is not very difficult thing to see yeah this is happening because um, you know the heat ball so essentially something like this you see uh, if that's your domain okay that's your domain sorry about my drawing i mean it's very bad but uh, even if at this point also if it is taking so you see the heat ball will look like this no okay this is your x x not t not let's say the heat ball will look like that okay so for small enough r that is uh, it will be included in omega t so that's not a issue okay so um, i mean i am assuming that there is a r uh, because this is assumed huh? uh, so as assume means uh, it is always there but i am assuming that for small uh, for some small r positive this is in omega t and uh, we are going to employ that so if that is the case then uh, you see m is what u of x not t not see i am not doing anything special i am using the same you know proof which we did for the laplacian case okay there is nothing changed the exact same thing so that is equals to 1 by if you remember 4 r power n this 4 r power n is that thing which we did not prove uh, in the last video okay we have assumed that this is the uh, integral of x square by t square yeah over the you know heat ball yeah so uh, by mean value property it is e x naught t naught r x naught minus y square by t naught minus a square dy ds okay this is what we the mean value property so this is by mean value property right this is by mean value property okay now if that is the case see uh, equality here yeah. if you if you think about it the equality holds okay if u is identically equals to m right okay see this particular thing is always less than equals to you can say that this is always less than equals to m right so that is what i am saying the equality goes see why i am telling you this thing you, you remember last class we assumed that some integral that's what i am just saying huh? see double integral of e x naught t naught r i i did this no this particular thing by t naught minus a square dy ds this integral if you look at this integral we prove that this is 4 r power n okay so i am using that here if you take that integral and put it inside 
okay they are missing something no here u of ys is there that is what i u of ys is there clear u of ys is there okay now uh see what am i doing here is the for this equation i'm sorry about that uh, see for this equation you take the maximum of u and you know push it outside if you take it then it is m now i am left out with m 1 by 4 power n double integral of this thing right and that is equals to 4 r power n so 4 r power n and 4 r power n is getting cancelled out so i am only left out with m so when does the equality hold so equality see u of x naught t naught is equals to m and less than equals to m so equality holds when u is identically when uh, u is identically equals to m equals to m okay within the heat ball e x naught t naught r okay hence hence u of y comma s that is equals to m for all y s in e x naught t naught r okay so oh, what am i saying i am saying that uh, see this equality if it holds this but e of x naught t naught is always less than equal m for all you know u s in this heat ball that's what we proved the so u of x naught t naught is equals to m and less than equal m okay so that proves that u of y s is equals to m of course that's that's what uh, i just wrote so this is this is the same thing okay now you see what we are doing is this so this is a small technical detail which we want to fill up so now what we are going to do is in omega t okay so in omega capital t okay uh, draw any line segment okay. line segment draw any line segment connecting this point connecting x naught t naught with some y naught s naught in omega t clear you remember that uh, i mean how we proved mean value theorem for uh, sorry the, the strong maximal principle for laplace equation uh, we showed that it is a constant in some small neighborhood and then we uh, in some set yes and then we showed that that set is both open and closed and hence it is the whole set okay we are going to do something some kind of i mean the, the, something in the same line okay so here uh, x naught t naught is the point on the boundary right x naught t naught x naught t naught okay see this is the point x naught t naught uh, where is it yeah x naught t naught is in omega t some sorry not on the boundary in the interior okay uh, omega t okay now and Let's say there is another, so that's your domain. That's your domain, okay. And uh, let's say this is your y not s not. So we are just drawing a line segment here, which joins those two, okay. Can I do that? Can I join a line segment? Of course I can because you know, given it is connected. 
so we are always assume it is connected there is nothing special about it so we assume it is always connected okay so uh, for s not less than t not less than equal to t not of course uh, i am going taking for all time t less than t not so now what you are going to do is i am i mean defining this thing so let's say r not uh, set r not to be the minimum of let me write it i will explain what it is s greater than equal s not such that u of x t equals to the maximum m okay for all points x t in l and s less than equal t less than t not okay so what am i doing which points are we talking about so i am talking about such so r not let's say that i am so this is a definition this is a definition you set r not to be the minimum of all such s okay see u of x t equals to m i know that uh, in this there is a small heat ball at least that is there where u of x t is equals to m right and i am taking a line segment here like that okay and i am saying that this is your l the line segment huh, joining those two points now i am saying you look at the i mean you know the uh, time variable s huh? so s which is greater than equal s not of course so s is see this is s equals to s not so you look at s which is greater than s not okay and where u is a maximum okay so u uh, u is taking see i know that in this heat ball in this heat ball okay u is n i am i am i am thinking of all these s okay which is greater than x not s which is greater than so s lies here somewhere okay so this is your um, the range of s okay and t so basically t is greater than s but less than equal to t of course because you know this is the maximum t not and we are looking for the minimum such r s okay minimum such s where s is greater than s not and u assumes its maximum okay you set that is to be s not okay now does such a thing exist of course it does why because it is u is uh, continuous so, so since u is continuous continuous hence the minimum exists Clear? so uh, where am i looking at see i am looking at uh, the i am saying that you take all the points where u is assuming uh, minimum uh, sorry the maximum m okay uh, on the line l on the line l okay such that uh, and uh, you take the minimum of all such s which is of course greater than s not you take the minimum of all such s that's what it is saying yeah set it to be r not now so first thing first so let let r not greater than s not so for, uh, first thing first either r not is greater than s not or r not is equals to s not anything right okay so let us assume that r not is greater than s not then u of some point yeah i don't know some some point uh, let's say z not r not okay that is equals to m okay for some point for some point z not r not in l intersection omega t okay 
I mean, there is no L, inter, L intersection omega t, you can safely assume that it is in omega uh, t, okay, uh, because we are assuming it is uh, connected. So, L intersection omega t is essentially omega t, I mean, don't worry about it, uh, uh, sorry, it is essentially L, okay, but I am st still writing it in sense that the first part we did not assume that it is connected, clear, okay, then u of, so, so if I am taking that uh, R naught, is uh, s not r not is greater than s not let's just assume then u of uh, i mean if you take any point which is in l intersection omega t that in that point u is m because that's the definition clear okay and so u is equivalent to m on e z not r not R, okay for small r positive yes or no see so i have a new point z not r not okay where i am saying that the maximum m is attained okay if that is happening then i can do the exact same procedure here so now my new point is z not r not and for that point i can do the exact same procedure and i can say that u is m in that uh, you know ball heat ball so essentially here also i can say that in a heat ball around z naught r naught and radius r u is equivalent to m okay exactly uh, following the same argument okay now but that's a problem since e of z naught r naught r okay it contains it contains L intersection, let me write it properly, R naught minus delta, okay, less than equal T, less than equal R naught, okay, for some small delta, delta positive, okay. Now, C if u is equivalent to m on that uh, again let's say that's the heat ball again in this heat ball if u is equivalent to m so u is essentially m yeah that's a problem that's a contradiction why because uh, in this this heat ball will contain l the line segment of course the line segment is included intersection that uh, what is the time in, uh, included are not as uh, there because you see uh, where is it yeah because the, the time the maximum uh, the time goes here is up to up not because you remember the heat ball uh, e z not r not r has i mean the z not r not uh, is the tip of the you know uh, the top part right okay so t has the maximum of t is r not and the of course uh, t can be taken to be r not minus delta also right okay so that contains this so if that is the case then u is m for t less than equal r naught minus delta also okay which is actually a contradiction okay which is a contradiction which is a contradiction okay yeah. okay see this is because uh, i mean r naught is a minimum of s right it is a minimum of s greater than of course um, s which are uh, greater than s not such that this thing happens okay this is the minimum but i you are showing that there is r not minus a delta also there is some r not minus delta where u is equals to m so that's a contradiction right okay so this cannot happen and hence hence r not equals to s not okay and so u is equivalent to m on the line segment l clear so on line segment on any line segment l i have proved that u is equivalent to m now what we do is this so see please remember this thing the proof i am doing i am not explicitly assuming that it is not connected i am assuming that it is connected huh? Uh, the whole set is connected 
so now you fix any point fix x in omega clear and you take a time which is t naught clear okay greater than t greater than equal to 0 less than t naught okay then there are exist you see there are these points right x naught x1 xm this equals to x huh? so essentially what am i saying i am saying that you have u is o connected it is non empty it is open it is relatively closed right that is what i showed it is relatively closed okay so essentially what is happening is this what am i doing yeah so okay one thread what did i write yeah i i, I started out with a x and uh, we fix a t and okay so there are points in the domain in this omega okay in this omega so this is omega cross t equals to zero this part t equals to zero yeah you take some points here join it like this huh? join it like this okay mm, so so you take some points uh, this which connecting connecting so there is this, this uh, points uh, so basically what i do, want to do uh, i uh, so what i want to do is you see there are these points in omega right i want to connect a line segment um, you know which connects uh, every point so let's say x um, i minus 1 to x i okay uh, with a line segment but which must lie on omega you understand what i'm trying to do i don't know how to write it there exists this point connecting um, connect uh, okay not connecting this is a line segment we should write it like this it will be better huh? one second i am I'm lost for words actually how do i write it uh, so you understand what i'm trying to say you take some points huh, and uh, you know join them with a the line segment in such a way that that remains on the uh, domain omega okay so yeah so uh, let's write it like this such that the line segment joining segment joining xi minus 1 to xi must lie on s on mm, omega clear okay um, that can be done because it is a non empty open and relatively close set right and uh, of course the set is connected so we can do all that okay. now you select some time okay so t naught greater than t1 greater than mm, greater than tm which is equals to t you select some time okay and then the line segments in okay uh, you see there is this set and there is a corresponding set corresponding set of time intervals okay so then the line segment segment okay segments in r plus r n plus 1 connecting x i minus 1 t i minus 1 to x i t i see up till in the initial case since i am assuming the connectedness i am just using the connectedness of omega to connect some points you know uh, or the, you know how do i put it uh, so uh, in a polygonal path essentially yes in a polygonal path in omega in this level i am connecting now i am taking some times here okay so let's say t equals to some times here okay and then i am connecting this this points x not t uh, x1 t1 x2 t2 x3 t3 xn so i am connecting those line segments clear okay 
and this must lie must lie in omega t okay see all of this is a problem here in drawing you may not see anything because the domain is a nice uh, ball kind of thing huh? uh, but the thing is it may not be in real life but in real life you always have that the domain is connected and hence you can actually show that the uh, you know uh, there is an orthogonal path between the uh, uh, sorry not not the orthogonal path poly polygonal path between this uh, in the omega or between those points okay one point is connected to the next like that and then uh, you take the time uh, so the height okay that's uh, the time um, variable also in account so xi minus 1 ti minus 1 and xi ti those things will lie in the whole domain right okay now if that is the case since then from step done above we have u is equivalent to m on each segment on each segment and so u of x t must be equals to m is, is is it clear see what am i saying here i am saying that what you do is you first of all prove that take a point x not t not okay so let's rephrase all of this together what we did you take a point x not t not wherever it is it can be on the boundary it can be on the interior okay but wherever it is uh, so first of all we are assume that it is in the interior somewhere x not t not so you take any point y not s not of course s not is less than equal t not okay s not is less than equal t not i am assuming that. now if you assume that doing some you know this this uh, analysis which we did doing this analysis you can actually show that on this line segment which joining x not t not and y not s not of course this line segment should be in such a way that it is always in omega t hmm? if such a case happens then you can show that in that line segment okay uh, u has to be equals to m that is via the uh, you know mean value property okay once you show that then what you do is you take some particular points you know some points on the uh, this thing you know what is it uh, omega t yeah some points on omega t and join those points together okay in which way in a polygonal path okay polygonal path in omega and after that you take the time variable and you know put like um, uh, you know select the point like xi minus 1 ti minus 1 and xi ti you, you join the points in space time join the point in space time in a polygonal path like that once you do that use the same analysis which we did in the earlier case so a on every line segment so let's say in this line segment huh, you know u equals to m use that uh, idea so you know in this point u is equals to m then now again you consider the heat ball here and you can show that in this line segment down you go down okay in this line segment again u is equals to m now again you go down you go down you do it like this okay and you can actually show that u in this way so since c omega is connected right so if that is the case then uh, you can actually show that u is going to be m on uh, every line segment like that and since omega is connected and you can connect any two points with a polynomial path hence you can say that you can have you know uh, what do i so you know you can you can have u is equals to m in the whole domain so essentially it is saying that if there is a maximum is attained in the interior yeah it has to be the constant okay yeah? so now let's look at a small remark you know as a result of the strong maximal principle we always have this property that of course i am taking omega to be connected so don't worry about it let u in c to 1 omega t 
intersection C omega T bar okay now some of you may think that why am I taking all that why I cannot take C21 omega T bar I can of course take that but you know um, this is a much bigger class right because I am just here I am saying that if you are taking the closure here and forget about this part huh? then I am saying much more I am saying that the function has to be twice differentiable with respect to x up to the boundary I don't want it huh? I want a much bigger set so I just want continuity up till boundary but interior it has to be c2 in x and uh, 1 uh, c1 with respect to t that's what I am saying okay so let this set um, solve solve the initial and boundary value problem u t minus Laplacian of u equals to uh, 0 in omega t okay u equals to 0 on the boundary del omega cross um, 0 t okay and u equals to g on omega cross t equals to 0 so on the base this base u is g okay this sides u is 0 okay u is 0 in this side and in the interior u t minus laplacian so in the interior u what does u do u t minus laplacian of u equals to 0 okay now if that happens where g is greater than equal to 0 okay we are assuming that let's say g is greater than equal to 0 okay such that there exists x naught with g of x naught greater than um, 0 ok so uh, the same thing which we did in Laplacian so what am I saying that it is positive everywhere in omega t but it is uh, sorry it is non negative but it is positive somewhere in omega ok there is a point x naught in omega x naught in omega with g of x naught positive ok if that happens then the strong maximal principle says says that u is not only greater than equal to 0 it is saying that u is strictly positive everywhere in omega t here ok so this is exactly uh, I mean this is a trivial thing they exactly the same kind of idea which we did in uh, la same you know the while proving strong maximal principle for Laplace equation the same thing happens here it is saying that if g is positive in, at one point on the um, you know base somewhere here huh? if g is positive at the some point then that u has to be positive everywhere ok so it pushes forward so this is called the infinite speed of propagation propagation for disturbances in heat equation heat equation clear so uh, I mean it goes on once it is positive at one point it positive everywhere huh? and uh, the, the, it moves on with the in future time also so that is why it is called the infinite speed of propagation it's just a name huh? infinite speed of propagation okay uh, so basically how the mm, see here there is the initial condition u is g right and the, the after that the, the thing is this uh, particular phenomena actually models how u moves inside omega t okay with uh, in the future in t greater than equal uh, whatever uh, the base yeah so it says that once in the initially if you start with a positive temperature or whatever yeah uh, then the whole system when it moves so you the density or whatever you want to i mean whatever it models it remains positive okay that's what it is saying okay so very very strong statement here okay so that's one uh, property now uh, another application very very important application this i am doing here so another application is the you guys already have guessed it i think it is called the uniqueness of the heat equation heat equation now 
this is the second part i am doing uniqueness huh? i do not have to do uniqueness because if you remember we did it in the first part of heat equation okay so uh, but still here also you can do the exact same thing i mean uh, you can prove the exact same thing but in a different way okay so let g be continuous on the parabolic boundary so continuous on gamma t parabolic boundary okay gamma t and f is in is continuous in omega t okay then there exist at most one solution u in c21 omega t intersection c omega t bar okay of the problem u t minus laplacian of u equals to f in omega t u equals to g on gamma t okay so essentially what is he saying this initial and boundary value problem uh, admits at most one solution okay see this I, uh, here uh, since i already proved here that there is a uh, solution for this problem i can say that the solution is unique clear without the proof of solution you can say that there are at most one solution yeah the proof of this thing proof i don't i am not going to do it you have to do it yourself huh? it's very easy right take two point um, solution c and v and after that take the difference of those two that difference will solve the heat equation and so it will be the difference will be a homogeneous problem it solve the homogeneous problem with the boundary is zero since the maximum and the minimum is attained on the boundary so this, uh, I, I mean i did everything yeah so the function has to be zero yeah so that is there and please uh, check it yourself it's nothing to do it yourself there's nothing to do i mean you can just check it yourself huh? it's just a one line thing okay now but the question here is this important question so so this is clear uniqueness holds and you can use maximal principle to do that yes now uh, the main question now is this you want okay can i have see uh, this is omega t omega is assumed to be bounded yeah but what happens in rn this is clear in the whole set rn yeah can we say something like that same kind of thing that the uniqueness holds and all so for that let's just uh, try and prove the maximum principle maximum principle okay for the this is called the Cauchy problem right this is called the Cauchy problem this is a one Cauchy problem I mean you do not have to have the boundary data just ut minus plus and u is fine okay mm, I will write down the Cauchy problem so maximum principle for Cauchy problem in Rn that's the question okay does that hold okay I don't know how to write it uh, does that hold yeah, I have to write it okay so the answer is this no it does not hold okay it does not hold so essentially uh, they, uh, let me put it like a small remark here okay of course u equals to zero is always a solution of u t minus laplacian u equals to zero in r n cross r n cross zero infinity that is always true okay but the question is this zero t sorry zero t uh, i am not doing it for zero infinity right now zero comma t okay and u is zero on r n cross t equals to zero okay see in this thing u is of course zero that's a solution well, this is a cauchy problem right so that is the solution here with this boundary condition with this boundary condition okay 
but I mean one can prove so but I am not proving this thing yeah this is beyond the scope of this uh, I mean uh, course so but one can show one can show all other solutions solutions okay grows rapidly so they grow very fast okay at infinity clear okay so uh, we cannot expect uh, maximum principle in whole of rn that's what okay so we have to modify it or place some restrictions on the solution so to do that what we are going to do is i am going to write down the maximal principle in rn this is maximal principle principle in rn okay what is the maximal principle in rn so it says that let u is in c21 okay of course rn cross open zero t closed okay intersection continuous on the zero t okay the closure this is open zero t this close zero t okay uh, solves this problem solves u t minus laplacian of u equals to zero in R n cross zero t and u equals to some function g on the boundary on R n cross t equals to zero. Clear? If that is happening, now what did I say? For this problem, maximum principle does not hold, but we have to put some restriction on solutions. Yeah, so we uh, solve this equation and satisfies see what did uh, i mean we did not prove it but we sh said that all other solutions wrote, grows rapidly as mod extends to infinity okay this we can show so what we are going to do is i am going to put a uh, control on the growth okay so uh, satisfy the growth estimate growth estimate See, if you are allowing all solutions to grow, I mean, you know, exponentially very fast as uh, mod extends to infinity, there is no way you can find a maximum or a minimum principle like that, right? Okay, so you have to have some control here. So let's say u of xt is less than or equal to some constant time exponential uh, alpha mod x square. Okay, uh, so this holds for x in Rn and uh, t between 0 and capital T for some constant c and alpha positive. Let us say you have this growth condition that u is always bounded by constant times exponential alpha mod x square. Then you can have the, the of course maximum we cannot say because this is not a you know compact set. Mm, supremum of u in rn cross 0 t that is equals to sup of u in rn which is g clear so the maximum of g that is equals to the supremum of u on rn cross 0 t this is what he is saying yeah so basically the maximum kind of principle only but for rn and we have to have a uh, growth estimate which is constant time exponential alpha mod x square let's look at the proof of this now proof or maybe i can do it in the next page it will be better So if you have any idea what we should do is this, see initially we did this sort of uh, maximum principle for uh, the bounded domain, okay. Somehow if we can uh, 
uh, use some similar sort of thing then we can actually uh, you know use that property which we just proved huh? so let's see that if we can do something like that so first of all we assume see t is arbitrary here i don't know what is capital t huh? so assume assume and i don't know what alpha is assume 4 alpha t is less than 1 okay this is our assumption first it may not be but i am assuming that so if that is the case then there exists epsilon positive such that 4 alpha t plus epsilon is less than 1 of course it is true okay now you fix y in rn and mu positive and define the new function here which is v of xt u of xt minus mu by t plus f7 minus t whole power n by 2 what am i doing here i am just defining if you remember this is what exponential minus x minus y square by t plus epsilon minus t okay this is for x in rn and t positive what am i doing this is the fundamental solution right at x minus y t plus f t yeah and <coughs> t plus epsilon t so uh, see uh, this is the fundamental solution right and uh, i am just taking u and i am just multiplying minus mu times the fundamental solution and i am defining v to be like that okay now clearly clearly we can say that vt minus laplacian of v is equals to u satisfies ut minus c u satisfies ut minus laplacian u equals to 0 so v satisfies uh, this is 0 and again this that's the fundamental solution right so what you can do is you can actually say that vt minus laplacian v is equals to 0 this is using linearity linearity of v of the heat operator of the heat operator okay using linearity of the heat operator so if that is true then now i am going to do what we did earlier so you fix a r positive okay and set omega to be b uh, for this y y r okay y r so we we set omega there is a new omega which is defined like this and you set r positive then omega t how does it look like it is b y r times 0 t closed okay hence you now what sort of uh, set you have it's a bounded set right compact set so you can invoke whatever we did earlier and i can say that the maximum of v in omega t bar is equals to the maximum of v in the parabolic boundary gamma t clear okay now if x is in rn okay then v of x comma 0 that is equals to u of x comma 0 minus mu by t plus epsilon whole power uh, n by 2 i am taking small t to be 0 yes and i am looking at what v does on the you know the boundary okay so minus this e power minus x minus y square by uh, T plus epsilon. Hey man, uh, I missed a 4 here. No? Sorry about that. Huh? This is the fundamental solution. So 4 is missing here. Okay. 4. Okay. Now, so this is less than equals to u of x0. Yeah. Because this is a positive term. 
so this is less than u of x0 and which is equals to g of x yeah so i can show that v of x0 is less than g of x okay and if mod x minus y okay this is equals to r and t lies between 0 and capital t then what do we have then let's see what happens say that v of xt is u of xt minus mu by t plus epsilon minus small t whole power n by 2 e power uh, minus x minus y square r square by 4t plus epsilon minus t okay it's very small <laughs> okay so that is there so this is less than equals to i know u there's a bound on u see u is less than c times e power alpha mod x square okay so this is this is c e power alpha mod x square okay minus mu by t plus epsilon minus small t whole power n by 2 e power minus r square by 4 t plus epsilon minus small t okay this can be written as constant times exponential alpha mod y plus r square clear okay minus it i am using the ex, uh, increasing property of exponential minus mu t plus epsilon whole power n by 2 okay here also this can be dominated by this exponential minus r square by 4 t minus small t okay sorry t plus epsilon t plus epsilon okay so i am just replacing this thing see mm, uh, i mean this is a decreasing function and uh, this is a decreasing function so minus of this is increasing so i can just you know dominate it so that's what i did okay now now you see we have as you 4 alpha t plus epsilon is less than 1 hence what do we have 1 by 4 t plus epsilon is equals to alpha plus gamma right for some gamma positive clear okay i can just add in that yeah okay therefore we can do all these calculations and we can say that v of xt okay this is less than equals to c times alpha uh, exponential alpha mod y plus r square okay minus mu see i am changing this to uh, I'm using this property here okay 4 alpha plus gamma whole power n by 2 okay and e power alpha plus gamma r square okay i'm just you know sorry i'm just i'm just you know putting it here i mean whatever the value here i'm just replacing that value i'm just putting it in that uh, in this particular thing okay so i have this and hence this is less than equals to supremum of g clear this is less than equals to supremum of g so this is if 
R is selected sufficiently large. Okay, supremum of G on R n. So you understand what I am saying. See, I cannot let let me explain what we are trying to do here. I cannot work with the whole R n. So initially, what we are doing is we were using this ball and making the set a bounded set. Yeah, it's a nice compact set. In that set, you know that the maximum principle holds. Okay. Now using that you know the bound on u and you know tricking ourselves so essentially you see now for any x in rn v of x dot the bound v of x dot is always bounded by g of x right okay and in a in a ball of center um, you know with the, with the center x and radius r if you take a ball then you have that v of x t we, we show that v of x t is less than equal uh, this particular thing uh, i mean sorry it's less than equal supremum of g on rn right if you select so essentially what am i doing now is this if i after once i know that it holds for a bounded set i am taking uh, any two points x and y okay which is uh, such that mod x minus y equals to r sufficiently any two points which is uh, i mean whatever distance it is you can uh, actually have a ball like that right that uh, for mod x minus y equals to r okay uh, with those two points on the boundary now for that ball i can actually show this so i can do the exact same calculation here huh? and i can show that v of xt is less than equal this which is less than equal supremum of g over r a okay so okay how do I put it? So let's say this is your. Uh, I actually, you see, I I need uh, these three properties. So essentially, I need this property. Where did I prove it? Yeah, I need this property. So let's say this is uh, two. And after that, I need another property. What is the property here? Uh, I proved where where did I prove it? Yeah. So this is three and after that i proved another property very ah, this is four okay so by two three and four one has okay if you use two three and four you can say that v of yt okay for uh, v of yt that is less than equal supremum of g over rn Okay, this holds for all y in Rn and t between zero capital T. Okay. Okay. So now what you do is you let mu tends to zero. Once you take mu tends to zero, okay. Uh, what do you have? You have. You have that the supremum of u over rn cross 0 t this is equals to supremum of g over okay. so we we prove this property okay see v of yt v of ys or yt whatever you want to call it v of yt that here there is a mu right huh? if you take this mu to what see this mu i mean there is nothing special about mu mu i can take anything i want yeah i just uh, so if you take this mu towards zero what is happening is this this v of t we can say that this is less than equal supremum of g yeah where is it yeah so less than equal supremum of g and uh, if you take mu towards zero then you can take say that uh, i mean you see v is u minus this thing this part is going towards zero so we can say that u is dominated by uh, the supremum of g yeah yeah so you are done okay 
so that is that uh, and now the general case see this case why did uh, by assuming that 4 alpha t is less than 1 and we have seen that we have used it where did we use this property we use this property here right we use this property here 4 alpha t is less than 1 now what happens if 4 alpha t is not less than 1 so if if 4 alpha t is not less than 1 then what you do is we make small small intervals so first interval is 0 let's say 1 by 8 alpha okay and the second interval is 1 by 8 alpha and 1 by 4 alpha you do it like this okay for each interval you apply this result so apply sorry this is uh, so apply the above result above result in each interval in each interval okay uh, and then uh, i mean you can use so in each interval it is true so it has to be true uh, in the, you know whatever uh, i mean you understand so after after a particular uh, uh, so see what i'm trying to say is this for if 4 alpha t is less than 1 we are done if it is not less than 1 okay if it is not less than 1 then 0 1 by 8 alpha so what we are doing is uh, now i am you know breaking the uh, interval up into small small pieces and each piece we are in each piece we are trying to prove what we prove Huh? and after a finite number of times we can actually get the 2 4 alpha t less than alpha kind of thing right uh, so sorry uh, after a finite number of uh, i mean you know iteration we can actually get to the whole uh, i mean interval where we want the theorem to work you understand what i'm trying to say i want to let's say there's a big enough for, uh, interval where it does not work if it there does not work so let's see alpha is fixed here so basically t if t is big enough then we cannot have this huh? if something like that happens then you know you change you make it a small small interval break it up into small interval in each interval you know this works and so uh, hence it has to work everywhere yeah now as a corollary of course you can say that uh, as a so this is proved. Huh? Corollary, we can say that uh, ut minus Laplacian of u equals to f, u equals to g on the boundary, Rn cross t equals to zero, and this is in Rn cross zero t closed. This problem has a uh, has at most one solution not has a has at most one solution one solution u of x t okay we satisfy this property so uh, at most one solution with the property that u mod u of x t is less than constant times exponential alpha mod x square for all x in r and t between 0 t closed is this clear so what it is saying is if you put this initial condition so basically if you are just uh, estimating the growth like that if you are saying that it cannot grow more than that then you have a unique solution exactly the same proof which we did as earlier so this is uniqueness uniqueness in rn uniqueness in rn is this clear for a bounded set you have uniqueness in rn you have uniqueness but you have to have the control on uh, u so the control is given by this exponential uh, function clear okay so the last part I am not quite sure whether I want to prove it or not. Um, I mean, for now, uh, for this um, course, what I am going to do is I am going to skip this part. So, I am not going to do the proof of this, but I am going to tell you what is the 
uh, result and then we are done so the question is this see in la last equation what did we saw we saw that if our function is harmonic it is going to be analytic right so it's a infinitely differentiable function with a power series expansion around every point locally so here regularity what it means it means that let's say suppose suppose u is in c21 omega t okay does the same kind of thing holds here so let's say this solves the heat equation the heat equation by heat equation i mean ut minus laplacian of u equals to zero in omega t clear what can you say about you more what can you say more about you then what you can say is u is infinitely differentiable in omega t is this clear it's a very very strong statement yeah if what it says is if you take a function if you just show that there is a function which is c21 omega t and it solves the heat equation then that function is not only c21 but it is c infinity in both time and space okay so it says that it is smooth smooth in both space time in space time okay not both in space time okay so and uh, a small remark of this is the following the remark is if you see the pro the thing is let's say this is uh, in on the boundary you have some information okay so uh, let u attains okay u attains non smooth boundary condition non smooth boundary okay uh, values on the parabolic boundary gamma t okay still the assertion holds holds what does that mean it means that see one small thing which i missed is i am not taking intersection c omega t and all that i am just saying that if u c1 omega t inside if inside uh, the domain omega t inside the cylinder if u is c21 then it is c infinity inside the cylinder you don't worry about it okay of course that also says that you you can have a non smooth boundary values okay you can have so on the boundary you may not be continuous you understand what i'm trying to say on the boundary you may not be continuous but still inside it is smooth okay so the proof i am not going to do it but uh, i mean you guys can ch try it out if you want okay but you have to use some cutoff functions some cutoff functions cutoff functions is any in any way. essentially it has to be uh, between 0 and 1 and it has to be one somewhere zero outside that sort of thing yeah and um, i mean if you want you can try it yourself but for this course i am going to skip this part okay so i am going to skip this part and uh, with this i think i have done more or less everything here well posed this you can use the maxwell principle to find out if we, the problem is well posed or not okay so uh, um, i mean what did we prove let's let's uh, do a short recall here so short recall here so we we showed that uh, there is a fundamental solution for this problem um, so we first of all proved that there is a fundamental solution p okay uh, for the heat equation for heat equation so by the way whenever i say fundamental solution it is always given by capital phi either phi is the fundamental solution for heat equation or phi is a fundamental solution for the laplace equation okay so phi uh, fundamental solution for heat equation and using that we have proved the inhomogeneous problem right okay and then what did we show we showed that the problem has a uniqueness thing that um, if there is a solution it has to be unique of course the solution has to i mean the domain has to be bounded right then we proved the very important but uh, kind of difficult mean value property yeah which is not essentially your mean value but we defined a kind of heat ball and we showed that in that ball you know you can uh, do all this sort of thing yeah that, uh, that the mean value holds okay in in, in a different sense that is and then 
Today we proved that the strong maximal principle holds uniqueness holds and you can use it to even settle the uh, well posedness problem. Just uh, this is these ideas are exactly the same as we did for Laplacian. So I am not really you know uh, going deep into all that. Okay, so all of this is done. So with this we are going to uh, finish the heat equation part of this course. Uh, thank you very much.